Hello, and welcome to the Artist Forum. I'm Elliot Torres. In our first segment today, our own AFTV correspondent, Michael Inge, speaks to Kristen Marting of the Here Art Center in Soho about their programs and activities. Welcome to the Artist Forum. My name is Michael Inge, and today we're at the Here Art Center with co-founder and artistic director, Kristen Marting. Thanks for being here and having us. My pleasure. First of all, tell us how Here began. Well, we started in 1993, and it was four artists from two different organizations that got together to found the space. We wanted to make a space that was a theater, a gallery, a cafe, and there was this opportunity for all these artists to intersect and interpass with each other. I, I was reading on the website about the hybrid works. Tell me a little bit about that, the, the hybrid art. Sure. I mean, that was one of the founding impulses, was to have artists from theater, music, dance, puppetry, and media arts all working in the same space. And by seeing each other's work, they would hopefully be influenced by each other and then these cross disciplines would start intermixing with each other. Um, we think about um, hybrid work as the next generation after multidisciplinary, the multidisciplinary work that kind of started in the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. where there'd be a visual artist, a dancer, and a writer all working at the same time. But the thing that was different was that they each had their own threads their mm -hmm. own storylines, but with hybrid work, it's like an integrated storyline, but it's using an artist using whatever discipline they need to tell the story. Uh -huh. um, they might use puppetry for this part, but then they're using words or dance in the next part. And instead of it feeling like different storylines that are commenting on each other, mm -hmm. it's one integrated storyline. Um, share with me a little bit about the programs that you all have, like the residencies. Sure, um, we have a program that we started in 1998 um, called Here Artist Residency Program, mm -hmm. or HARP is our mm -hmm. nickname. And we call the artists in that program Harpies, is uh -oh. the nickname. <laughs> uh, and those are artists, again, from all disciplines. We have between 15 and 16 of them in the program at a time. Mm -hmm. And those artists are, they're really thinking about um, how to make a piece from the inception of the idea through work in progress, workshop, and full production. And we're supporting that work through all those different phases. Mm -hmm. And the artists meet as a group every month and show each other work, give each other feedback. We focus both on artistic and career development with them. So we also have administrative sessions on grant writing or mm -hmm. on budgeting or on skills that they need to grow their work to the next stage. Um, the program is also focused on mid-career artists. So it's mm -hmm. artists that need that extra push to make it to the next phase of their careers. So that's what, that's what the focus is. Okay, great. Well, from 93, over 20 years now, mm -hmm. tell me about some of the highlights. I know you guys have got some awards, some accolades, and some, you know, some great pieces that have debuted at here. Share with, sure. with us some of those. I mean, uh, some of the works that you might have heard of, we did uh, Basil Twist's breakthrough performance of Symphony Fantastique. Okay. Um, that was back in like 94, 95. Um, and that was an underwater puppet show, 500 gallons oh, wow. of water and non-figurative puppetry. It was like fabric and feathers and oh, wow. beautiful objects to Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique, mm. that music. And it was in this space that you're sitting in oh, now, wow. in this little space. Um, the puppeteers were invisible and you just saw this little like area where all the things appeared, but you couldn't see how any of it was being manipulated. Wow. Uh, we also did uh, Eve and Source of the Vagina Monologues. Mm -hmm. um, so we helped Eve develop that piece and it premiered here and ran here for quite a while. And then as you know, that piece has gone on to oh, be yeah. performed around the world, um, literally probably hundreds of thousands of times now. Mm -hmm. um, but that started um, not in this room, but in the theater upstairs. Oh, wow. um, and then, you know, more recently we had uh, Taylor Mack's The Lily's Revenge, mm -hmm. which was a really wonderful piece that was about um, marriage in America and thinking about marriage in different ways and sense of community for 35 performers over four and a half hours. Um, a really great durational piece. Um, so it's a broad spectrum of stuff you, you could see here from all different yes. focuses. Yeah. Tell me just a little bit about your role as artistic director. I know that's that's a huge responsibility. What are, what are some of your day-to-day -day, um, responsibilities and activities? Well, I meet with the artists mm -hmm. and um, go to rehearsals and give them feedback on what's going on. Um, I look at artist proposals and think about uh, if this is a good project for here and mm -hmm. why it would be or what, what, why it might not be and then talk to the artists about how they might make another proposal to us in the future that might be a better fit. Um, also, like meeting with 
the staff in general about how we're working with the artists, whether it's with the marketing department, about how we do that. My partner is Kim Whitener. She's our producing director. Mm. And so she leads a lot of the, the day-to-day development, finance, and marketing stuff, but I work in some ways on that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then Kim and I curate the residency program together because there are core artists and it's important that we both feel really excited about their work, so we do that together. Right, Yeah. okay. Um, tell me about some of the performances and projects going on now or in the near future. Well, we just finished our season of resident artist productions just mm-hmm. last week. Um, so the next thing coming up for us as a production is the Interstellar Gala on June 16th. Okay. So we're really excited about that. That's our annual gala, and we have amazing performers that night. Taylor Mack, Reggie Watts, uh, mm-hmm. Issa Davis, a whole bevy of awesome performers. Um, but uh, then coming up in the fall, we have Joe Solofsky is mm-hmm. going to be um, up in November, December with this piece called Send for the Million Men, which is a puppetry piece. I have a piece that I've been developing called Trade Practices, which is about the economy and how we assign value to things that will come up in September. Um, mm-hmm. And that piece is a big collaborative sprawling project with 10 actors, six writers, six designers. Oh, It'll wow. be site specific. It won't be here. It'll be at another location. Oh, so. do you know where yet? Uh, nope. Okay. Just, we're very close. Oh, okay. Not, not quite ready for public. <laughs> well, we have such a, a viewership of artists. Tell us a little bit about how an artist would become involved or submit to be a resident or how mm-hmm. could they reach out to here? Sure. We have an open call for submissions Mm -hmm. that's rolling for our sublet series, which is for outside artists to self-produce in our space for short engagements. It's a subsidized program. There is a charge, but it's cheaper than what the cost of the space is. Okay. Um, That program is rolling. For HARP, we do once a year submission. Uh, In past years, it's been January 2nd, but it looks like we're changing it to February. Mm -hmm. But I would check to make sure we don't keep it in January. So for now, stay safely January 2nd, though it may end up being February. Um, That's a once a year submission for a panel to review all the applications. Um, Our visual arts program, we do once a year also. That Mm -hmm. open call usually goes up in June, so it should be up in the next couple of weeks. And that's for the exhibitions for the upcoming calendar calendar year, January to December. So we, and those exhibits are up usually for six to eight weeks. And unlike a traditional gallery, we don't have a formal exhibition space, but we do have a space where thousands of people come in every month. So a lot of people see the work yes. um, and it's a great opportunity for exposure for visual artists. Great. So. Well, thanks so much for having us here today and sharing with us about here. Great. My pleasure. Thanks. For more information on here, go to here, H-E-R-E dot O-R-G and check us out at theartistforum.org. Till next time. Thank you, Michael. Joining me now in the studio is accomplished painter Marie Hines Cowan, whose most recent work, Musings, was shown at the National Association of Women Artists here in New York City. Welcome to the show, Marie. Thanks, Elliot. I had the opportunity to see your exhibition, and uh, I found it very interesting the way you blend uh, the Greek, Greek mythology with mo- uh, modern day culture. How, what made you decide to blend the two worlds? Um, well, I mean, Greek mythology has always been a part of my world. Um, one of the first books I read as a child after I learned to read was a book of Greek mythology. And um, most of the people, the personas, the characters in Greek mythology seem to me to be archetypical. Just, you know, archetypes that just follow the human race through the ages. And it just seemed really appropriate to bring them to our age and continue them here in New York City. Um, also because New York City is such a melting pot of cultures. And Greek mythology is also. And they pulled from Egypt, from the Middle East, from Europe. So it just really fit together for me. Nice. Um, we're going to show, we're going to take a look at some of your work. And I was hoping that you could walk us through sure. some of the pieces. Sure. OK, great. Here's the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, OK, that's Athena in Barnes and Noble. Uh, And uh, the book she happens to be reading in in that painting is actually the Odyssey. Uh, Ah, okay. (laughs) And uh, so so basically the whole idea that follows through this group of paintings is that the Greek deities and some of my muses come and follow me around Manhattan. Um, I 
stood in my studio one day and I said, oh, sing muse, which is like the first line of many Greek mythological and even Roman poet, uh, poems or stories. They call upon the muses to give them inspiration to, um, to just inform their stories. So I called upon them and the muses showed up and the Greek deities showed up and Athena was one of the people who showed up and she starts following me around the city and telling her her opinion and asking me to paint her so that she can be immortalized even though she's already immortal but right. so she follows me to Barnes and Noble and you know she's got a spear and a helmet and she frightens all the customers and is that where the next and uh, the, the next image one comes is in? yeah she follows me to the Institute of Fine Arts Library <laughs> and you know in Barnes and Noble everyone was, is frightened of her and is made uncomfortable in the Institute of Fine Arts Library they are so you know erudite and just, you know, they're the Institute of Fine Arts, that they're not interested in Athena, okay? They, they have their books and their research, and so Athena is just kind of like overwhelmed by the glory of the Fine Arts Library. And, right, and who are the people depicted in your paintings? Um, you mean, who are they, who are my models? Or yeah, who are they? your models, yes. They're all people that I know. Okay. Um, people that I've worked with, people that I'm friends with. Uh, on, on one occasion, I've asked a bank teller to pose for me. So they're all they're New Yorkers. New Yorkers, and they're from all different cultures and races. Um, expatriates from South Africa. Um, I've got a Korean woman who's posed for me. Just all different people, New Yorkers, and true also, New Yorkers. And also from uh, seeing your work, I noticed that you mix the your paintings with poetry. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide to uh, to combine the two? Um, there's a, a Greek word uh, called ekphrasis, uh, and that means a picture phrase. And basically it means a description in a piece of poetry of a piece of artwork. So I thought, well, I want to go the opposite way. I'm a painter, so I want to take my words and make them, obviously I make them pictures, but then I want to take the words and, and turn them into something more than flat things on a piece of paper. So I have all these stories about how the paintings came about, and then I turn them into three-dimensional text to join and be art objects as well as words. Coming to life Coming to life, page. yes, from, you know, from words to the flesh. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, um, with modern culture so fixated on the temporary and the instant, mm -hmm. with social media and everything, how do you think traditional art fits in the in the scheme of things now? Um. Well, I mean, in my work, and I think so much traditional work. I mean, the stories we tell are stories that are out there in the collective unconscious that have been out there for millennium. So they're there. However you tell them, they're there. So you just need to get them out. And I think that people will appreciate them because even if you don't know them, somehow they're still with you. They've been with you and you understand. Okay. And uh, your, you've, your exhibitions have shown here in the U.S. and also in Europe. Do you find that people react differently in Europe as opposed to uh, the audience here in the U.S.? Um, I haven't shown this current work in Europe, but um, I mean, I think Europeans are perhaps uh, a little more, the average person is maybe a little more in tune to art, attuned to art, but um, I don't think they react necessarily any different to my work. Okay. And also, uh, you're a leader in the arts organizations yeah. here in the tri-state area, uh -huh. um, National Association of Women Artists, as well as Pen and Brush. Can you tell the audience a little bit about uh, your work with those two organizations? Um, well, I mean, the National Associated Wo Association of Women Artists is a women's group, um, which was one of the major reasons why I wanted to be involved with it. Um, and it's just, it's a big, it's, well, We've got 800 plus members, so it's a big community. Um, so you know, there's a lot of support from the other women who are involved in it, um, and we just really um, push and support each other to move forward. And it's uh, 
it's really exciting to have all these women behind you, <laughs> you know? Um, all those people who are just at your back, <laughs> right. who are just there. What, are, what, are, what would you say are your long-term goals uh, with your work, and what would you need in order to, uh, to achieve these goals? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, my long-term wor work with this project is, well, I mean, I have a lot more stories to tell about it. Um, and I really would, in the end, like to have uh, a physical book of it, um, and in the middle, a ebook of it. So I, I kind of look at art in a, in a kind of holistic manner, um, you know, mixing the text with the pictures, but also with the internet and that experience. I mean, because that's so now. I mean, right. and then to continue on to something more concrete out of that, taking the, the, the paintings and the text and making it into something more concrete, but also keeping it very flexible as something that I can just say, so the poetry can just be said as well, you know, along with, while someone's looking at the painting, I could say the poetry. Um, so I, I see that developing all of these stories for another, this particular project for another five to 10 years maybe. <laughs> um, and then I have several other projects, um, somewhat along the same lines that I would continue on with after, also nice. literary and um, visual. Well, I definitely look forward to see what, uh, <laughs> what's coming next. What, uh, what advice would you have for uh, a painter who would like to follow in your footsteps, <sighs> who's just starting out? Just do it. Um, you know, when I was starting out, I had a lot of people tell me the painting was dead. Uh, and my work was too illustrative um, that, you know, should do something else. It's not, you know, get a bit, good job, you know. <laughs> get a job with insurance. Um, just do it. Right. Um, don't listen to, to the naysayers. <laughs> if this is what you feel, go with it. You've, you've, you've got to uh, produce what's in your gut. You've got to get it out there. You've, just say it. Just paint it. Just create those images. Well, that's great advice. Um, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, if you'd like to know more about Marie's work, please visit her website at mariehinescohen.com. The Artist Forum. Get connected, be heard. The Artist Forum is a place where artists of all disciplines can network, collaborate, and exchange information and ideas. You want to know when to catch us? Well, then log on to tvguide.com's local listing section. You can also see us live on the web by Manhattan Neighborhood Network's MNN.org. On the Artist Forum, you'll see interviews with New York City's emerging talents in theater, dance, music, the visual arts, as well as the written word. We'll jump the velvet rope to get interviews with entertainment industry's top insiders, as well as some of its underground talents. Expose yourself to the Artist Forum. Show us your work. Invite us to your performance. Do you have questions about the business? Do you need help better focusing on your career? Or maybe you just want to post information about an upcoming project? Well, log on to our website, theartistforum.org. The Artist Forum, on the pulse of community activities and events. I'm Elliot Torres, and I'll see you on The Artist Forum. My guest is a video producer with two live band shows on MNN.org, and he's also working on a film. Welcome to the show, Dean Lauren. Well, thank you, Elliot. And, and you know, I cannot uh, express my... my uh, First of all, why are the sunglasses? Oh, uh, uh, I guess it's the guy behind the shades. It's, I'm doing two live band shows a week, open mic here at MNN. We have uh, a different band, Mondays at 4.30 on Little Valley Music. And we have a band on Tuesday nights at 11. Uh, are You a Star? Basically, it's live before Letterman. Now, tell me a little bit about the shows in terms of who uh, gets involved in these shows. What we do is we've uh, been able to keep the mics open since about like 2000, but as of February, we have started uh, through the Red Sahara Collective uh, booking bands every Monday afternoon, every Tuesday night to play. Basically, they, uh, it's a trade-off. The bands will play for two hours. They'll walk out with a high-definition DVD quality for recording studio in exchange for playing and lugging in their equipment. It's a great deal. What genres of music uh, are oh, we talking for, about? From rock and roll to uh, jazz. It's an incredible. Uh, later today, uh, you're going to hear the clip of Mariella. And she's a duo. She writes her own music, singing Brooklyn Boogie. 
So it, it's, it's, a, it's our gift to the audience because we do live bands. So, you, you know, it's, it's kind of special. It's like the midnight special, Austin City Limits. We're the East Coast version. And so what, I understand you're also working on a film. What, uh, what's the premise of the film? The f premise of the film is, uh, it's actually uh, modeled on Sissy Gamache, a producer here, a strong woman who is uh, striving to be on the networks and be picked up by Chicago. Okay. And so, and of course, there's the background, the drama of the studio, the egos, the fame, the fortune, the lights. And that's why I wear, I wear the uh, sunglasses because, you know, sometimes the lights being here two days a week are tough. Right. So, and how far along are you with the film? Uh, we'll be starting to shoot in October. Okay. So we have our music lined up. We're doing fundraisers now, Kickstarter events. But we want to focus on getting the band uh, news out that we have an open mic every Monday at 4.30 and 11 o'clock on Tuesday nights with Are You A Star? And are you always, uh, I know, you're, uh, my understanding is that you're always focusing on a variety of bands. It's always different? Always different. We're never sure what walks in the door. Okay, and uh, you're going to uh, show us a video, so yes, you can and, go ahead and introduce that. And this, this was uh, the second group that came on our show. It was Mariella, and she is going to be singing uh, Brooklyn Boogie. And it's a, it's a special song uh, or clip because it not only explains where she's coming from, a transplant to New York, but how she got together with other songwriters, wrote this song, and to me it embodies the spirit of New York. So we'll just fade to black and roll the video. All right, let's take a look. So, although I am uh, originally from Hollywood, Florida, I live in Brooklyn. Um, I've lived in just about every, almost every borough of New York City, um, and they all are very, very special in their own way, but Brooklyn has a certain magic about it. And uh, I wrote this song uh, alongside my good friends Nick Coolidge, Lex Sadler, and Dan Mensch. And, um, you know, uh, it's just a really fun tune and um, really looking forward to the spring and being able to get that boogie back, boogie back in my body. It's been a cold winter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so this song is called Brooklyn Boogie. Tick-tock goes the clock on the wall Boom-clack goes the beat in the song There's no place that I'd rather be When I hear that boogie, I believe, I believe Feels like something's in the air Let the You can
If you'd like to learn more about Dean Lauren and be involved with his live band shows, please contact him at Red Sahara Collective at gmail.com. I'm Elliot Torres, and we'll see you next time on the Artist Forum.